Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at uh, a Linux distribution called Bodhi Linux right after this. So I wanted to, this has been in, on my list of ones to do for a while now, uh, quite a while actually. And I know that other YouTubers have done uh, videos and reviews of this already. So I thought I would take a different approach to it, look at maybe a different option at installing and look at it that way. I have not used the window manager in probably 15 years. Uh, it has been a long time for me. Uh, it, it's just that it was old hat to me and uh, I spend more time in the terminal. Window managers were just something that got in my way. So uh, <laughs> that's I'm still kind of set in my way to still use the terminal. So I don't really care if there's a window manager there or not. But uh, I do use GUIs from time to time because you have to on some of the new stuff. And it just makes life a lot easier than trying to use command lines for everything, especially if you're trying to use something like FFmpeg, you'll get writer's cramp before you type in the complete command. Plus, you'll probably use up several pages of command options, and that gets a little hard to correct unless you're in an editor. So anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about Bodhi. What is it? Let's go out to the website and find out. So yeah, let's go out here. And let's go to the home page first. So Bodhi Linux is based on Ubuntu 18.04 long-term uh, long service. So that they've taken that and they wanted to do something a little bit different with it. They wanted to use Enlightenment, but they didn't want to use Enlightenment. They took Enlightenment and they, it is the desktop manager and they stuck that in to uh, Bodhi, but they modified it. And they also modified the window manager and they call that Mashka desktop. The whole thing is now called Mashka, Mashka, Mashka desktop. So um, and so they're trying to. The, the goal here is to do two things. First, allow older hardware to run and run well. But you know, obviously, they also want to take care of the newer users too that have newer hardware and allow them to be able to use the release as well. So, I mean, that's always the, the issue you get into, right? If, I, if I'm trying to support older hardware, I'm on an older kernel, and those older kernel don't have the device drivers that newer hardware needs. So how do you handle that? Well, the way Bodhi handles it is they release several different versions of the operating system to be able to help with that. So let's talk about that. Let's go over here to the downloads and take a look at it. So there are four different ways to do this. The first way is uh, if you look at standard release, HWE release, and app pack release, those are all 64-bit versions of the kernel. Uh, standard release has a 4.15 kernel. Uh, the HWE release uses a 5.4 kernel. App release is based on standard, and I'll show you how you can get the app into HWE if you go that route. I'll show you that today. And then legacy is if you have 32-bit. So if you have a machine that supports 32-bit, you're not left out because they have a they have an installation for you along with the applications that are tuned for 32-bit as well. That kernel, I believe, is 4.9. So yeah, that goes back a ways. Um, but you know that's, that's what you have to do if, if you want to go back that far. But that should get you back to hardware 15 years back. Uh, that is supported. So if you've got something that's that old, you might want to get it out of the dustbin and this might breathe some more life into it for you. Uh, so yeah, this, as far as, um, let's take a look at the system requirements. Um, they say at a minimum, I'm going to laugh a little bit because I always laugh at minimums, 500 megahertz processor, 256 meg of RAM, and 50 and 5 gig of disk space. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, well... If you install the standard release, which supposedly is the smallest footprint, now maybe, maybe what they're referring to is 32 meg. So maybe that may, and that would probably work. Uh, but for the 64 bit, uh, uh, -uh. <laughs> you're pretty close to 256 meg already. So that would be way too tight to try to run. You'd be swapping stuff constantly. Um, I would recommend on the on the standard to go with the the recommended settings of one gig processor, 512 megabyte of RAM, and 10 gigabyte of disk. That's not a lot today. I mean, seriously, that's nothing. 
Uh, now, for the day, back at that time period, yeah, it would have been, but not now. That's nothing. Um, yeah, so that might be referring to 32-bit. 32 32-bit, 32 of course, is going to take a smaller amount of memory because integers don't take as much memory and addresses don't take as much memory. So it's usually about 40% less overall um, in comparison to a 64-bit system. If it's all 64-bit, all the applications are 64-bit, and one that's all 32-bit. It's usually about 40%, usually, around in there. So, okay, we've talked about that. We've talked about that stuff. I've already installed this. I'm obviously, I'm running on it. The browser I was using there, what they call web, I should have left it up, and so we can go look about that. Um, I know this is a this actually is a is a uh, browser that's been around in Linux for a while. I just don't know which one it is offhand. I could read through the all this stuff to find it, but maybe I'll do that later and I'll put a note in the in the uh, comments. But this is a uh, a WebKit uh, GTK version 2.28.4, so eh, it's okay. I mean, it's not something I would use, but it, it seems to be pretty lightweight. I uh, let's see how much memory it might be taking. We can go find that out. See, I always have these habits of using that lower level menu, and you don't have to with this. So with it up, 673 meg. Okay, let me close the dialog button and see if that brings back a little bit of memory. Yeah, 3 meg. And then let's kick this out of memory and see what it drops back down to. And give it a second for the buffers to clear. Should go lower than that. Looks like there's some processes that are still hanging on. Always is with data with uh, networking software. It'll hang on for a while, and then it'll die as soon as it times out. Uh, but anyway, we'll let that go. 272 isn't bad though, but I, it will drop lower than that. It usually gets down around 240 is usually normal, and and I can if this doesn't do it, we'll drop the system and we'll come back to it. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. So the reason why I was saying that is that that's the normal way. You, you don't, you know, you bring up the, you tear off the menus and run it. Now, a lot of people are using window managers, don't even bother with that. They just set up keyboard shortcuts and they bring up everything that way. So you may want to do that. And uh, Bodhi certainly allows you the opportunity to, to customize it that way. Uh, as far as what you have here is you have your, your typical system functions. Shut down, log off, lock the screen, hibernate, all that stuff. Time and date. This is kind of cool. It's a, it looks like a pixie tube. Uh, if, if when you get it on your screen, you'll see that. Uh, and then of course these are your these are your different um, work areas. So if you want to uh, do a different desktop, you can switch back and forth between them. This is your um, this is your copy. Um, your copy block if you want to keep stuff here you can a lot of people seem to be going that way these days where you keep a centralized uh, copy paste area and then you can just reuse it instead of having to recopy from one app to another so so you instead of only holding one copy you can hold a lot more than that that's the idea behind it anyway pulse audio uh, and then you have your network your networking functions here and VPN connections I haven't tested a VPN I'm not on the part of my network that uses one, so uh, I, that would probably mess up a lot of stuff. So I'm not going to turn one on. Anyway, um, let's go out here and take a look at what we got. So when I installed this, LeafPad was the only editor that was installed. Of course, that's a GUI editor, right? And then after the update, uh, it installed Vim. So I guess people wanted Vim, and so they put it out there. And it should bring it up. I saw it, and then it flashed off the screen. Mm -mm. It's probably not good. Where'd it go? Well, fine. You don't want to do it that way? We'll do it this way. Oh, it's not installed? Are you lying to me? Nah, it's there. Okay. So, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with their launcher. There are some bugs in this, and I have hit a few uh, as well. <laughs> so, probably hit a few more. Uh, ARNR allows you to set your your screen size. So if you want your resolution change, you can do it here. Let's go down here. You can also change the orientation as well. So yeah, and, and if you have multiple monitors, you can change your primary over from the other monitor if you wish. I used to have to do that on one because uh, the one cable I needed was 
Anyway, it's a long story. One of the cables was just short, and so the monitor had to be the wrong side. Of the, so anyway, uh, finally got that fixed eventually. But it's just cable. I just I always like to dig out things that I have first before I go out and buy something. Uh, graphics, ePhoto was the only thing here. And then after adding LibreOffice, that I added on Add after the fact. And, of course, it stuck that in there. Uh, I think education gets the math part. And then the Internet, I added Firefox. That wasn't here. Only web was. I wonder how much memory Firefox has taken. That'll be interesting, won't it? Let's go up to see how bad that is. That should take up some memory. And it does. Whew. Well, is that... That's 563 meg. That's still not bad. Um, of course, I'm just on the, I think that's Google's page. Let's see. Uh, let's try. Which is the default, of course. Yeah, that, I thought that would bring it, bring it up just a little bit, going over here to this one. DuckDuckGo is a little bit more expensive in terms of memory, and then it's it'll dry it'll drop down after a while. But yeah, so not bad. Let's go ahead and get this out of memory. Want all that return? To, went back to 275. So maybe for this session, that's just where it's going to be. Yep. Okay. So handbrake I added and LibreOffice. This is the App Center. So here you can go and you can look through some of the software that they have. This is kind of their curated selection. Um, I don't know if I have. Let's go with Inkscape, I guess. Oh, wait. Let's not do Inkscape. Let's do Krita instead. I have to authenticate with the root for sudo. And then it should stop and say, are you sure you want to install this? Because there was that whole list of stuff that's going to install. So I'll be back. This looks like it'll be a while. Okay. That's all done. And it didn't take all that long, I guess. And then it should be available to me. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. That should be down in here. There's Krita. 401. Wow, that's back a ways too, but that's what we're going to run into a lot. I mean, the um, that's the problem you have with you're trying to be stable, right? You're trying to get to a stable system, and in order to do that, you have to keep everything the same as when it was released and made stable because adding on anything other than security patches could do a couple of things to you, right? It could throw you out of compliance. And it also can introduce instability into the system. So you don't want to put anything on other than security patches because if you go enhancing packages, then you're, you're, you're breaking your environment. Now, <clears throat> at a home environment, who cares, right? That's, that's all up to you and what you want to do. So the only ways that we have around that is we can install a PPA. Uh, and that's good for maybe one, maybe two packages, maybe if you're lucky. But anything beyond that, you're asking for trouble. Um, and so the answer there is you go flat packs, you go app images, or you go snaps. Um, snaps on, on Bodhi is not installed by default. So if you want to go that route, you'll have to install it. And remember that this is running on the 1804 version of snaps, not the 2004. So, yeah, it's a little bit different, a little bit different. Um, and then you, you could install your packages as app images, which probably have a better chance of being compatible with your desktop in terms of the theming and so forth and respecting that. Flat images, maybe, maybe not. It might, it might not get be close. So that's always the issue. There's, there's always a solution, and then there's always a problem that comes with it. I mean, that's just, that's the way engineering is. I mean, it, it's a, <laughs> you can't get it perfect because if you did, we'd all be out of business. I don't know if we just do that on purpose or whether, no, nah, we don't do that on purpose. No, it's, trust me, we don't do that. No, we don't. We don't do that on purpose. It's just things that we know that are going to be issues that we don't have time to put into the system.
it may have to stay under time time crunches and under budget. So, yeah, a lot of things get pulled out at the end, and so you have gaps. Um, but that's life. Anyway, um, let's see. We talked about the App Center. Let's talk about the File Manager. So this is PC. Uh, what was it? PC what? I haven't. I've seen this one. I just PC Man FM. I've seen this one. It looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's a file manager. What are you, you going to say about it? I mean, the icons are eh, okay. I mean, they're green, <laughs> really green. Um, but uh, I did notice one. I always like whenever I see this, I can connect to a server. Then I can, I know I can put things like an SSH server together, and then I can have the files list on a remote file system. That worked once, and then when I shut the window and came back and tried to do it, you know, have it, it was still there. It was still, it still showed it connected. But when I tried to actually pull it up, it kind of froze, which kind of indicates to me that the connection timed out, and somebody in, the, in there didn't go, oh, I need to reconnect. So something is still locked, and it's saying, oh, no, I am connected, and it's not really connected, and so nothing's, nothing is showing on the screen. So I suspect that might be the problem, I'm guessing. But uh, I've seen that kind of thing before, and so, yeah, that happens. But that is not, I know it's not a big deal. Not really. Not really a big deal. So let's see what else we got here. We did that. 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 And we're down to HTAP we've been looking at. Network connections, nothing more than your standard uh, network manager stuff. One thing here is that on other distributions, uh, if I connect, if I connect to that, I don't know how this handles changes. Usually, on some of the modern distributions, you have a toggle button that's here that, to turn it off and back on, so that it will force a reread. And so, this you may have to go out and restart the network manager service. Um, in order for it to reread the or reload it or tell it to reload its configuration, but uh, yeah, you'll have to do that. Uh, and instead of having that nice little toggle here, at least I don't see it. Uh, I don't see it as an option here. Nope, uh, it isn't an option here. Nope. And that's just the buttons to make it bigger or, or minimize. So yeah, I didn't see that. So anyway. What other system tools we got? Synaptic Package Manager. I'm going to bring this up because I want to show you where the Bodhi package uh, is for the massive app package. So if you do decide to do the HWE, uh, you can I'll just search for Bodhi, and it's right there. So this is Bodhi-AppPack. That is the applications bundle that was part of the ISO. So if you want to just install that by itself, you can. Uh, it'll take a while. There's a lot of packages in there, obviously. Uh, if that's what you want, you can do that. So I just want to show you that. I didn't see it on the App Store, though. I mean, I, I, I suppose it wouldn't be hard for them to add that, but it's not. I didn't see it there. Uh, system tools, terminology. Oh, yeah, we should look at this. So one thing, <laughs> one thing I encountered with this, I always like finding little issues. I mean, it's a little, it's not a big deal. Just bring up settings, you use the right button on your mouse, and then it, it kind of draws out from the side. And then you can pick whatever you want to look at, whether it's, you know, uh, whether it's a, a, a new or you want to split the window, you know, all those kinds of things that you can do with it. Um, but settings, as you can see, if you've already got data on your screen, it kind of overlays it and makes it hard to read. Just click off of it, do a clear. I did notice that at least the designer started one line down. So as you can see, it starts one line down from the one above it. So it does give you a little room to see things. But, and here you can set your fonts, your themes, your background, if you want an image back there, if you want it transparent, you can do that, all that kind of stuff. You can change your color uh, codes around so that if, if it's bold, it'll be a color, and if it's italic, it'll be a color. So you can do all that too. So, yeah, um, and then if you want to split your screen, you want to split it into t halves. I, I don't do that anymore. I mean, when you're on a single terminal that you had a single display, that was great. But when you're on a system that has a window manager already, why do you need to do that? 
You know, that was really meant for when you were on a single display terminal that didn't have any ability to, to do multiple rasters on the same screen. So, but why would you do that? I mean, can't you just, yeah, set up a quick, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, for me, it doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't do that. Uh, places here, this is just opening up your home folder again. Uh, quick launcher, you can, uh, this is a widget. So if you wanna, I don't find this useful at all. If you wanna launch an application, you can go in here and then you can find it and then you can launch it. I just, I don't find that useful at all. It seems like you're clicking around a lot, so. But hey, I, you tell me if that's something you would use, great. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying for me, I wouldn't use that. These go to the wiki, these these three. Um, and then about the theme, it'll. this is kind of cool where it'll actually show you kind of a nice little thing. And then there's a place where you can select the theme if, if you have multiples on your machine and you can kind of see what they look like before you pick them. So I can look at the default. I, of the two choices I have been given, I can do this. It is a minimal install, so you have to expect this. This is kind of what you're gonna get. It's very minimal. Um, restart Ma, uh, Mashka. So this is kind of cool in that it doesn't really affect the session. It just, I guess if you have, if it's locked up for, or um, part of a window is frozen or something, you can just reset it. Uh, and hopefully that'll bring you back to your sane version of the system running fine again. Um, but yeah, I, and it didn't kick me out, didn't have to re-log in. I suppose if it gets bad enough, if it gets hung up bad enough, it'll do one of two things. <laughs> the uh, window manager, the Windows manager, the X Windows manager or Wayland manager will crash. It'll throw everything out of memory. So, yeah, I mean, that's always a possibility. And my, and resetting the window manager isn't going to fix that. But you would have to log out and back in in case that happened. Because you'd be on the command line. So, all right. Let's, yeah, I keep doing that. I know. I keep doing that. It's a bad habit. It'll go away soon. So, <clears throat> you have a nice little settings panel here. This has improved a lot since the Now, this was an update that's occurred recently, I think, in September they added this. Um, so yeah, you can go in and you can have these nice little ways to, to get to your stuff so you don't have to memorize where everything is. It's all grouped together. All your settings are right here, which is nice. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's a great idea. Um, in fact, I think it's such a great idea. I'm going to change. I got to go over to downloads though. I'll put my, I downloaded one that's really gaudy and awful, but it's really green. I was going to use Kermit, but I got stuck with blocks because I figured that I wouldn't get a copyright strike if I use blocks. I can't copyright cubes. So, yeah. So, it's too common. I can't do that yet. So, then uh, you have, some, uh, you ha you have some, some themes here that you can change to. I'm not going to do that, but uh, I could. I guess I could. But I know it'll mess up everything, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and then it brings up that again. Here's your colors for your borders and all that stuff. You can change all that. So you can you can change your apps, how they're launched, uh, the virtual desktops that you have, your window displays, your window lists, reminders, your folk, the process management, the switcher. You can customize this thing to your heart's content. I'm not going to do that because, like I said, been a long time since I worked with a window manager. I know that. Usually people spend quite a bit of time setting up their window managers to get it exactly the way they want it. Um, typically though, they will share out their settings with you. A lot of guys will do that. So um, if you're looking on distro, uh, if you're looking at, uh, um, hmm, if you're looking at uh, maybe GitHub or you're looking on uh, Redis, uh, you'll you'll probably find people that are sharing out their stuff there. I mean, you can always ask, hey, who has the best one? And start that war. Um, who has the best window manager settings for uh, for this setting for this system? You can do that, and you can start off a war and then run and hide. Uh, modes presentation mode. I don't know what that actually does. I'm I'm assuming I can't find anything on their wiki. I'm typically in presentations. 
what you would want to have happen is that it cuts off the notif notify notifications that it can, will pester you during a presentation. You see that all the time with presenters. You'll see people saying, hey, hey, Bill, what about this? You know, there's like, wait, I'm doing a presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. And then they go on and talk for a half hour while you're trying to do your your presentation. So that should neutralize that kind of thing so that those notifications don't get through to the screen. I would assume that that would be the case here. Uh, but I can't find anything on the wiki to tell me otherwise. Uh, gadgets, stuff you can add. This is uh, layers for the background, your hover keys, and probably you can configure all kinds of things there. Again, it's all about configuring your window manager the way you want it. Um, let's see. Modules. These are down here on the bottom. That's what they call these. I did notice, I don't know, this might be... I don't know if this is a bug. I don't know if this is just the it's just some overlap weirdness that's going on here. But if I try to unload the clipboard, I lose my clock. And even though the clock is still showing there, I don't know if I maybe I can unload it and load it back. Well, something is there. It's probably some one of these boxes is overlaying it. But when I bring this back up, it's fine. So that may just shove that over enough where this stuff rolls out of its way. So it's probably just a configuration issue. I don't think that's a bug. I think that's just a matter of sitting down and figuring out, oh, I got to move this out of the way. So I won't blame it. I won't blame the system for that. Shelves, how many of those you want? These stacks here down here. There, You can change your theme. You can change your wallpaper, which we already did. And then finally at the bottom, what do we want to do there? Lock it, hibernate. Uh, reboot whatever so I want to go back into terminology here um, I don't know can you see that should I make that I don't know if I can make it bigger I can try let's see what's the maximum size I can make the font I'm at 20 right now that's 20 really that doesn't look like 20 Hmm, let's see if we can find something really big. Those are all really small. Well, there's something really big. Let's try that one. Did that change? Yeah, that changed. That's not really big. It looks really big, but it's not really big. Um, nine by eight, that's even smaller. Nope. All right, we'll go with that. That's probably as good as we're going to get for this. Um, without, ch I could change the display resolution and make it that way. So, or zoom in on it, I guess. I could do that. Um, so a couple things I want to do. We've done the H top. Let's do the glances and see how, what the uh, app cache looks like. 472 meg, not bad, that's not bad. This is probably, uh, other than Alpine, this is probably one of the lightest weight systems I have seen in a while. And it's coming back up, I've been running a bunch of stuff. If I rebooted this, that would all probably fall below 240 or 250 at least. But uh, the one thing I do wanna do here is something I always do This is a tool, it's free. There is a paid version of it if you want to do things like compliance testing. So if you have, uh, it basically is a tool to check the hardness of your system and then it makes recommendations for what you need to change to bring your system into spec. If you're doing compliance testing with this, you can also do pen testing with this, uh, vulnerability testing. So. Uh, on a system where I'll actually go out and do probes. Um, those are all on the commercial side where you have to pay a fee. Uh, I think it's three bucks per system per month, something like that. It's not much, um, unless you have a lot of systems that it could get really expensive. Um, you can go, there are professional tools that are part of things like Red Hat. A bunch of used to subscribe to it. Looks like they've kind of dropped out of the program. I don't know why. Uh, generally, with the credit with with systems that are checking for hardening, 
like for example, PCI DSS, they have a list of guidelines that they will put out. And then each vendor has to come up with the scripts to do the tests. So there are these facilities that allow them to do that. And, and Linus is one of those, where as you can see right here, they do compliance testing. But again, that's only on the pro versions of the software. They don't, the free versions don't do compliance, which, you know, they, uh, that takes work, right? I mean, you gotta keep things <laughs> up to date. Those compliance settings change on an annual basis, sometimes on a monthly basis. Um, but uh, yeah, there are changes that have to be made. But then um, this will go through and it'll check to see how well hardened your system is and it'll rate it as a score from z zero to 100. 100 being uh, totally hardened. Now, in my in my experience for home systems, the, it's the, the old proverb that 90% of the work is the last 10%. When you get to 90, it gets really difficult because there's, a, I mean, every single inch is a lot of changes. So every, every 1% is a lot of changes to get there. Whether or not you want to do that for your home system, I'm not telling you no, but you got a lot of spare time on your hands and that's what you want to do, go ahead. But I guarantee you it'll break as soon as the next version of Linus comes out because they're always checking for new stuff. Uh, the two areas here that I think I'm being penalized on, I saw there were two warnings. It says, uh, ah, I'm missing a security repository. Now, why is that important? So normally, once you've, set, once you've met your, let's say you're in a compliance situation with PCI DSS, which is the credit cards, right? So you've gotten your system together, you've gotten it hardened, and you submit it to the auditor for, from the, whoever's doing your PCI DSS audit. They go through your system and they say, yeah, 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 no, fix this, fix this, yeah, 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 and they go down through the list. And when you get all the, everything yay, or you meet their, or they'll say, I'll sign off on this as being accredited, you're good to go. But you can't change your system at that point. You can't modify anything in that system because if you do, you get to go re-accredit it again. So usually there's exceptions that are made for security uh, patches because, you know, everybody realizes that uh, security patches aren't enhancements. They're fixes for vulnerabilities, and there has to be allowance made in the specifications for accreditation in order to accommodate that. And so what the, what the distro vendors do is they'll put the security patches in a repo by themselves. So they're not, there's no chance that they'll get mixed in with enhancements that are coming out with the other packages or even within the same group of packages that have the security fixes. So, and that assures the auditors that, oh, you're not, you're not adding new features, you're just patching security, we're good, we're thumbs up. So that's what that's referring to is that you don't have anything that's earmarked as an official security repo. And that would be a problem to maintain accreditation. Now for home use, who cares? I mean, do you actually just keep your systems perfect on the, just do the security patches? Some of you might, some of you might, some of you may not. So you may just go ahead and update the features because you want those new features. But so, um, yeah, so it's just kind of flagging that. No big deal. 63, uh, a little on the low side. Nothing after that, though. It's really surprising. One thing, though, I did notice. At least, it's actually, I noticed the omission. Normally on system D, it'll go through and perform a system analyze, system D analyze, uh, with the security setting to see how all the services are set up. You guys have probably seen that in the newer versions of the operating systems. However, I think, and we can check this, I think in this particular version of the OS, that system D was a version that did not have uh, that, um, let me spell that right though. It did not have this uh, in there, so. It didn't have the security. We can look for it. Time, blame, blame, <laughs> critical chain, plot, dot, dump, log level, log target, syscall, verify, and calendar, and service watchdog. So, yeah, so security is missing. Um, the, it just wasn't one that was added to this particular version, and that's why it doesn't do it. it Linus is smart enough to figure out, oh, that's too old <laughs> to be able to run that check. Once, and then I did notice one other thing that I want to talk about, too. So you see this do release upgrade? 
Ubuntu always puts those out there so that um, if you want to migrate from 1801 or 1804.01 up to 2004, this gives you an avenue to do that. But Bodhi has its own uh, repos, and, and they've made a lot of customized changes to this. I noticed, I went ahead and I ran through just the dry run. I didn't actually do the thing because I'd have to reinstall everything and I didn't want to do that. Being lazy, of course. So I, I ran through the, the dry run and then I noticed that it completely disabled the Bodhi repos, the repos, and it slated all those packages for removal. So I think what you would what happen if you were to do that release upgrade, that what would happen is you would convert this from Bodhi uh, to uh, Ubuntu 2004. <laughs> I don't know what window manager you will get. Probably just GNOME. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going to undo everything and pull everything out. So, uh, yeah, you may end up with a text a text uh, console window because <laughs> everything is torn out. But uh, you might not want to do that is all I'm saying. So, anyway... Um, <laughs> Let me turn off my duplicate self, my mini me. Um, yeah, I, I, that's all I had today. I, Bodhi, I, it's, it's always the balance between you know the, the 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 stability and being able to make sure that your system is is going to run well and it's going to last a long time and keep going. Versus, I need the latest packages now. Once you're in production, typically you live with what you have until you do a major upgrade. At home, we upgrade as soon as it's available, right? So this is probably not going to work for the majority of you uh, that want the latest and greatest uh, unless you are in love with app images and flat packs or snap images uh, in order to get the package levels up to where you want. So. At, at overall, though, uh, from the standpoint of a very you know, and looking at it from long term stability, I, yeah, it, it's fine. I mean, it's 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 a great release. It is a little green, but I think uh, an afternoon should be able to fix that uh, and get rid of some of this green. But uh, it is very green. Green is not my favorite color, but some people like green. Uh, it's just not mine. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's fine. It's. Uh, I like the fact that they allow old stuff to run. There's not very many people doing that today. Uh, I like the fact that this is based on Enlightenment and it has uh, it has a custom, uh, some custom work that's gone into it to, to give it some thought and expand it out some. It looks like they have spent an awful lot of time on the look and feel of the system since the first time I saw this. So, yeah, kudos, guys. This, you guys are making really good progress on this. I, I And, you know, I appreciate when I see good work. I, and I, I don't care if it's, you know, a, you know, a couple of years behind the times on the packages. Um, and if you've used Debian for any length of time, that's something you live with. I mean, that is just, that is, if you want stability, that's what you got to say. I can't be updating stuff. I can't be just putting out the latest and greatest stuff because that unhinges things. The reason why that's off back there is because a, back, a update took it out. So I get to rebuild that tomorrow. So yeah, I, that's what happens is that uh, you'll get an update that comes through and it just completely wipes out things. So if you want stability, you don't want that. You don't want that at all. All right, so off my soapbox. Hope to see you all again real soon. Please like and subscribe and bye for now.